Let's start using the machines API to create and run a machine. The first thing we're going to do is continue to use the fly CTL command, which will just call the fly machines API in the background for us. This essentially lets us see how the fly launch and fly deploy command uh, does a bunch of work for us. We're going to do it manually here through some API calls. So I'm just on the documentation page for running machines via FlyCTL, which is what we're about to do. There's this warning about it being stale. It's really only because the documentation here covers making a web application accessible over the public internet, which is just what FlyLaunch and FlyDeploy does for you. So this is just a little redundant because typically to deploy a full stack application, you would probably just use the FlyLaunch platform, the FlyLaunch command. Without making you read any of this documentation, let's just head over to the terminal here and begin. Now, we're just going to go ahead and uh, do the process that Fly Launch and Fly Deploy does for you, or a lot of the process. We're not doing a full thing, so I'm not going to orchestrate, um, you know, rolling deployments or anything like that right now. We're just going to run a machine in an application within Fly, right? So the first thing we need to do is actually create an app. That's going to be fly apps create, and then we can just name uh, some application here. I'm going to call it Radom. You can go ahead and figure out the acronym yourself. And let's see, it's in my personal account in my case, and now an application is created. Now, an app is just a shell for machines. So creating an app on fly over the API like this doesn't do much except for, you know, add an entry to the database somewhere in fly.io just to say that this app exists. Now, this app, uh, we're going to try to make it accessible to the world. So what I need to do is actually assign some IP addresses. In my case here, we're going to allocate uh, a v4 address. It's going to be shared. And uh, well, we don't have a fly.toml file here or anything, right? Because we didn't use fly launch. So uh, the commands here don't know what application I'm talking about. So we need to define that every time we run a command here to say, you know, apply this to this random application that I just created. It's an IPv4, so that's why it's v4 here. It's going to be shared. It's not uh, getting a dedicated IPv4. Oh, you can do that if you want to pay extra. But we have shared IPv4s just because IPv4s are more of a scarce commodity. So I'll assign an IPv4 to this. And then we can do the same thing minus the shared command for a v6, an IPv6 IP address. The shared uh, concept doesn't exist because IPv6 is uh, almost an inexhaustible resource, right? There's so many IPv6 addresses out there, we don't need to create or use a shared one. So this is actually a dedicated IPv6 to your app. And let's see, did I do that right? I did. Okay. So I have an IPv6 and an IPv4 uh, allocated to this application, which means it's going to be able to be publicly accessible to the internet. Now we can actually run a machine. So I'm going to do fly m. So m is just machine or machines. That all works. But I do like fly m because it's nice and short. We're talking to the machines API here. We're going to run a uh, machine here. And we're going to do our random uh, application. And let's see. I'm going to do an image of nginx latest. So we're just going to run nginx. We're not going to uh, create our own image or application just yet here. And then we need to do a few things. So uh, I'm going to do ports here, dash the dash p1. We're going to say any port 443 traffic should be routed to port 80 in here. Um, so it's basically doing TLS termination, uh, SSL termination, right? The fly proxy, the fly router layer will uh, terminate any SSL connections made to this. And we'll just route to port 80, which is where our web server, where Nginx is going to be listened here with the Nginx official Docker image that we're using. So this is going to be TCP. It's going to be used for TLS. It's for the HTTP protocol. And then we can route the same thing. Um, don't worry about all these, uh, the special connotation, the special annotation I'm using here to route requests. You're typically never going to have to do this. Uh, you will probably spin up machines over the API. They might not ever be publicly accessible to the internet directly. And typically, in this use case, you'd use fly launch uh, to get this. So you don't really need to know this, um, this specific syntax, but it's useful if you do. And it's also documented. So uh, port 80 traffic, non-TLS traffic, is going to be routed to port 80, where the uh, Nginx container listens by default. That's, again, it's going to be TCP. In this case, just HTTP, no, no TLS in there, right? Because it's not for SSL connections in this case. Next, I need to say this is going to be in the region Boston. And that's it. Let's just see if I did anything wrong here. Oh, OK. And the thing I did wrong here, I didn't even remember, is I don't need an image flag. Image is just one of the um, arguments here without a flag. So. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to move this to the uh, last bit of the line. And that's going to be Nginx latest for the image. So spinning that up, it's creating a machine in the app random recreated. And let's do fly logs. Again, we need to define our app here. 
and we have our log output. We can see this is up and running. Let's go ahead and back to my browser and do radom.fly.dev and we should see our Nginx welcome page here. And in the background, you can see my fly logs outputting some new output as the access logs to Nginx is aggregated to Fly's logging mechanism. Okay, so that's really it. I just wanted a quick demonstration showing you how to run a machine manually yourself. We did some advanced configuration, advanced in quotes, uh, by routing, um, you know, seeing how to route web requests to your application here, right? And port port for three and port 80, routing to port 80 where the uh, Nginx official container image uh, listens for web requests by default because we didn't do any customization here. In the next video, I want to show you running your own kind of custom application, right? Not just the Nginx latest Docker image. So we'll build a Docker image that runs a little Golang application and just see running our machine using that as well.